Now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. One day every tongue will confess you are gone. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give. Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before you're gone, come, come, come. Good morning. It's great to be here and I beautiful sunny morning in, in Alberta when our weather is more like our fall usually is. We're not complaining, we're enjoying it and we also happy that you could be with us and celebrate with us as we prepare to for the great event of Christmas uh, and that's what Advent is all about. So let us gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, for God, God forgives us all of our sins. And as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We light the candle of joy. We light the candle of joy. This candle Our first Sunday in Advent, we lit the candle of hope, remembering the hope which comes in Christ. The second Sunday, the candle of peace, remembering God's dream of a peaceful world. Today, we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. In Advent, we are in a time of waiting, like the Israelites who wandered through the wilderness waiting to come into the promised land. We wait for the coming of the joy of ages. We wait for the day where we can join our voices with the angels to sing, 
Joy to the world, the Lord is come. We wait for the day when everlasting joy will be on earth with us. We light this candle in joy. On this day, we remember the Spirit who breathes joy into our lives. Dear Jesus, help us focus on you during this busy season. May we stay aware of the joy you bring into our lives. We want to find you in the everyday moments and come with hearts of gratitude to your manger on Christmas. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers and come to us, bringing light into the darkness of our hearts, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 4 and 8 to 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim, proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recom recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. 
I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. Here ends the first reading. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. The epistle reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel for the same Sunday is found recorded in the Gospel of John, the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that was that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed. I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered, I baptize you with water, but among you stands one who you do not know, even he who comes after me the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Hello, my name is Melissa and I will be helping to teach the Kids Corner lessons every now and then, but I'm really excited to be here to teach this lesson today. This week as we read the Gospel of John, we're actually reading another version of the story we read last week. So last week we talked about a really special character named John the Baptist. And we learned that even though he was a special character in the Bible, he wasn't as special as the someone who's coming after him. And that was Jesus. So now we're going to read part of the scripture together. I want you to pay attention for some special words that you might not know or might not have heard before. I also want you to read along so the words will be down below. 
and it says, He, John the Baptist, came as a witness to testify a light so that through him all would believe. All right, so did you hear some words that you might not have known? In this version of the story, they call John a witness and they say that he's come to testify. And those are words we don't usually hear. You could maybe hear them in a court or maybe on TV or in a movie, but most of us don't use those words in our everyday life. So when they're calling John a witness, a witness is somebody who knows something. So they're saying that John is somebody who knows something. To testify means that you're coming to tell what you know. So in this case, they're saying that John is coming to tell the people what he knows. And he is testifying that there is a light. There's a light that's coming. And that light is actually Jesus. And he also tells them, like we learned last week, that they need to prepare. And we learned that last week, prepare just meant to get ready. So he's coming to tell everyone that Jesus is coming, but we need to prepare, we need to get ready. All right, so as many of us already know, it is the third Sunday of Advent, and that means that we're a week closer to Christmas. But it also means that we get to light the pink or the rose colored candle on our Advent wreath. So if you've seen that candle or you've watched people light it, you might know that it represents joy and it can represent all sorts of joy. So maybe it represents the joy that we feel with our families or the joy we feel at Christmas time, but it really represents the joy that Jesus is almost here. So it's almost Christmas and Jesus is almost here. So just as we're decorating our houses and maybe we're singing our Christmas songs and baking our cookies, we just need to remember that we're not only waiting for the presents that come on Christmas day, and we're not only waiting for that yummy pumpkin pie after our Christmas dinner, but we're also waiting for the birth of Jesus. And that's really what Advent is about, is the waiting, the preparing for Jesus' birth. Thank you for listening to this Kids Corner lesson. We are gonna end with a quick prayer and the words will be down below if you want to follow along, but let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, as we continue to prepare our homes for the holiday season, help us to prepare our hearts for the coming of our special guest, your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. See you next time. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There was a man from God whose name was John. Quite an introduction, don't you think? Earlier this year, I heard that you were looking for a pastor. Is that right? What are you looking for? Do you know? What should his credentials be? Should he be tall, dark, and handsome like the movies like to have it? All my life I have tried to visualize what Jesus looked like. I've seen quite a few artists' renditions. Some I like and some I don't like. I'm not too uh, fond of the image that came out of the, tour, uh, the Shroud of Turin, if you, if you happen to see that documentary. I think we all tend to imagine this beautiful figure of a man. And then I'm re reminded of what Isaiah said, chapter 53, for he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. Uh, just imagine gnarled and twisted. He had no form or majesty, comeliness in some other translations. 
So he had no former majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. I've given that a lot of thought over the years. Jesus did not come into this world looking so beautiful that women would swoon over him. He was not so pretty to look at and God intentionally had it so that it wouldn't be beauty that would cause us to desire him. We will find out that there are other things that happened so that God defined, directed us to what he wanted us to see and not what we thought we would like to see. He wouldn't let the demons tell us or the crowds who he was so that we wouldn't have a different slant or the wrong slant of who this Jesus is. The purpose was that we would come to desire him because of who he was and what he would do for us, what he would sacrifice for us. Yes, of course, God is the most beautiful thing being in the world, but it couldn't be beauty that would draw us to him. Do you see the difference? Let me mention one, one more thing before I go on. We may well have looked upon someone for the first time and considered him or her less than attractive, maybe even ugly. But then we got to know that person. And the more we discovered that he was, kind and considerate and generous and humble and loving and gracious and courteous. I could go on. That that person would begin to look more and more beautiful as time went on. I'm sure you've discovered that for yourself. It's like couples who have loved each other for many, many years they actually begin to resemble one another. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie entitled Johnny Lingo. It tells of a man who paid an exorbitant price for his wife. Eight cows. And thus transformed her from a homely creature to a raving beauty. I think you got the picture. I have no intention of discussing John's appearance, except that he looked a lot, I think, like the prophets of old, kind of rough on the outside. What John the Apostle wants to point out is that John the Baptizer was sent by God with one specific mission. He came with a job to do, and that was to tell people that he, God, at long last was sending the one who was to be and is the light of the world, namely the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. That was John's one job, his mission, his job description, his reason for being. And we're going to talk more about that a little later. I started out this morning by asking, what are you looking for in a pastor? What is the job you want him to do, or more specifically, what does God want him or her to do for you, with you, and through you? We have a call committee whose task is to seek and to find the person God has chosen for this, for this mission. That's not a small task, and we ask that you give that matter your prayerful consideration as well. Let us look at this Advent text to see what John wants us to see. That's how I go about trying to determine what it is that the text is really trying to get us to pick up. 
The authorities from Jerusalem were quite straightforward, blunt if you want to. Who are you? And John the Baptist knew exactly what they wanted to know, that he was the long-awaited Messiah. Israel knew that the Messiah was to enter our world through them, that is, the Israelite nation. God had told them right from the time that when they were created that uh, to be a nation that God had a mission for them as a nation and that that mission would be enabled by the Messiah who came through them. Now you have to realize that there were many imposters who had come and gone who claimed to be the Messiah but who were not the Messiah. And it was the priest's job, like the ones who came to ask John who he was, to determine whether someone claiming to be the Christ really was or not. And for this reason, John was absolutely clear in informing them that he was not the Messiah. Now, Scripture was clear that there would be a forerunner whose task was to announce the Messiah's coming. In Deuteronomy, Moses said there, that a prophet would be coming. It also stated that Elijah would return. Well, if you're neither of these, then who are you, was the question. Again, John the Baptist was clear about his mission, and that was that he was there to announce to a sinful people that God was coming, and that they were therefore to get ready for his coming, much as a city or a country beautifies itself for a state visit or a visit from the king or queen. You see, Sinful mankind cannot, that is, we are simply in no position to meet the Lord of all creation standing up. We meet the Most High God with our faces buried in the ground. Check out the scriptures. You see, sin condemns us, and we're all sinners. And we know that because we all die. So we're all sinners without exception. And God is totally pure, righteous, holy, who hates and condemns sin. And, and we cannot face him in that condition. We will die if we do so. So John comes crying Get ready to meet this God, just as the prophet of old Isaiah told us to do, and as John the Baptist said we must do in order to meet this God who is light. Think about it. The very God who brought this entire creation into being himself was going to enter his own creation as one of us. That's an absolutely inconceivable, uh, really unbelievable uh, fact. And that is why John the Baptist, when asked why he was baptizing, replied that his, re his baptism was really a preparation for the real baptism with Jesus would, uh, the, namely God the Messiah would baptize us with fire. Now, this is really important what I want to share with you because that is exactly what Jesus does. And I want you to go to Romans chapter 6 and, and find out why. And what he says there, he says that in our baptism, Jesus takes us with him through his death and resurrection into his kingdom, which he said himself is not of this world. And having succeeded in washing us clean through the blood that he shed on the cross, 
He fills us with his spirit who abides with us throughout this life while we journey here on earth till we join him in his kingdom which is in heaven. A fantastic operation that we usually skip by and the, and the Anabaptists don't understand at all. We do not come out of the act of baptism the way we went in. We have, in fact, left one country and gone into another, or one regime into another. The baptism that John performed to reiterate was a cleansing. Uh, there was only an outward show of what people were doing within their hearts uh, who, came, who had repented of their sins. John made it abundantly clear that he was not even on the same plane with the Messiah he was, whom he was announcing. Before the one who was coming, John the Baptist, was so insignificant, and John makes this clear, that he wasn't even worthy to bend down and tie uh, or untie the, the, uh, this Messiah's shoes, her sandals, the laces. When we truly recognize our status before our Maker, as John did, it is then that we are in a position to invite our Lord and Savior into our lives. What John told the crowds back then, he is still hard to grasp today. Among you stands one you do not know. What is he trying to tell us? I am singling this phrase out to help you see just what John was trying to put across. Maybe standing in the very crowd that was asking him the question was the, the greatest one of all creation, the one who brought creation into being. And yet he looked so very, very ordinary. He was one in the crowd. No one would have been able to point him out. That is why what God has done is so totally incomprehensible. You see, Jesus, the Messiah, the maker of all the creation, looks like one of us. He talks like us. So totally ordinary. And yet he made the world in which we stand. He did this so that we could really see who God is in his heart of hearts. What is the essence of his being. And what we're trying to do in this Advent season is what John tried to do. And that is for us to really see this wonderful God who loves us so much, this much as we've heard this morning, that he became one of us and ultimately died for us. John was what every true preacher and teacher ought to be. A voice, only a voice, a pointer to the king. Isn't that what you want in the past preacher that you are calling? Amen.
Let us worship God with our declaration of what we believe in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. He ascended in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. As we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their needs. For the church that, like John the Baptist, it may be a witness testifying to the light of the world so that all might be drawn to Christ. For creation, that all nations and peoples may be good stewards of the earth and its resources. For the oppressed, the sick, the brokenhearted, prisoners, and all who mourn, that God would anoint servants of the church to bring good news, to proclaim liberty, and to comfort those all in their needs. For our congregation, particularly those serving in education and worship ministries, that they may find joy and gladness in their work among us. And we pray that you will send us a shepherd who will point to you as the way. For the faithful departed whom God has clothed with garments of salvation, we give thanks. May we also be kept sound and blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We call on your name, mighty one of Israel, and commend to all for whom we pray, trusting in your promise of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.